how fast could a computer be? Computers get faster with each passing year, but could that trend in theory continue forever? One way computer scientists often model the idea of computation is with a Turing machine. A Turing machine is an abstract machine with access to an infinite tape of memory cells. Each cell on the memory tape contains some information, for example, a bit, a one, or a zero. The head of the machine reads a cell, can write some data to the cell, and then can move to the left or to the right along that tape, according to some set of instructions. We could define the speed of data processing as the rate at which our machine can process bits of information. A faster machine can process more bits of information per unit of time. In this theoretical world, our Turing machine could be as fast as we want it to be, processing as many of these bits of data on the tape as we wanted every second. But this is an abstract machine in a theoretical world, not a real machine in the real world. In the real world, is there a limit to how many bits of information computers can process per unit of time? It turns out there is a limit referred to as Bremerman's limit, named after the mathematician who described it. And the limit is about 1.3564 times 10 to the 50 bits per second per kilogram. In other words, a computer with a mass of one kilogram could process no more than 135 trillion 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 bits of information every second. That's quite a lot of information processed very quickly, but where does that limit come from? The answer is that it comes from the laws of physics. Let's imagine that we wanted to build an optimally efficient computer, a computer that maximizes the use of its resources so that it's as efficient as possible. That computer would need to have some mass, and in an optimally efficient computer, every gram of that mass would be devoted to performing as much computation as possible. How do we know how much energy this computer has? Well, for that, we can turn to Einstein's famous mass-energy equivalence formula, E equals mc squared. For any given mass of a computer, we can use this formula to compute the equivalent amount of energy this computer has. That number represents the maximum possible amount of energy that can be used for information processing. And in our ideal computer, let's put every last unit of that energy into processing as much information as we can. So how much information can we actually process? For that, we can look to another formula from physics, the Planck equation, which states that the energy of a photon is equal to its frequency multiplied by a constant, the Planck constant. And because every bit of information that we transmit or process needs to have some mass, this frequency ultimately represents an upper bound on how much information can flow through our computational system. Faster processing would require more energy, which would require more mass. And now we can calculate. We take the energy, mc squared, and divide it by Planck's constant. And if we assume a one kilogram computer, we get our answer. 1.3564 times 10 to the 50 as an upper bound on the number of bits that could theoretically be processed every second with a one kilogram computer. Adding more mass means a higher equivalent amount of energy and therefore more bits we can process per second. The earth, for example, is about six times 10 to the 24 kilograms. So a computer the size of the Earth could process no more than about 10 to the 75 bits per second. And the most massive computer we could construct would use all of the available mass in the universe. Our best estimates right now place the mass of the observable universe at about 10 to the 53 kilograms. So if we created a computer with all of the available mass in the observable universe, the upper bound on the number of bits this universe-sized computer could process is about 1.4 times 10 to the 103 bits per second. You'd think that's probably fast enough to calculate just about anything we could ever want to calculate pretty quickly. But that's not necessarily the case. 
there are certain computations that might take a long time, even for computers that hit Bremerman's limit. Consider the game of chess, a game with just 32 pieces played on an 8x8 grid. Despite not having many pieces or squares, it was estimated by mathematician Claude Shannon that there are at least 10 to the 120 possible different games of chess. So if our universe-sized computer tried to analyze every possible game of chess, it would take more than 2 billion years to do so. So why does this matter? Well, for one, we can use it to think about security. If we treat Bremerman's limit as an upper bound on the number of operations a computer can perform per second, we can use it to estimate how long it might take to break certain types of security, no matter how fast our computers get. To try all possible 128-bit security keys, that would take our theoretically optimal Earth computer less than a fraction of a second. All possible 256-bit security keys, that would take a couple of minutes. And a 512-bit security key, that would take at least three times the age of the universe. Computers today are, of course, quite far away from hitting Bremerman's limit, and other, more practical limits are likely to restrict computational speeds long before we get there. But there is a limit that means that certain kinds of computations will never be practical, no matter how big or how fast the computer.